Hello everyone, I'm Maria and welcome or welcome back to my nook. In today's video, I want to talk about all the books that I have read in January and February. The very first book I finished in January was In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead which is therefore also the first book I finished in 2023. How exciting! I honestly can't really tell you why I was in such a thriller mood at the very beginning of the year. Now this book is incredibly dark. I mean there are obviously dark scenes and yeah, dark characters in it, but I also kind of just mean that, I don't know, the way the characters are being displayed and the way the story is being told and the things that are happening, it just kind of gives this book a dark and eerie atmosphere overall. In general, I would absolutely suggest that if you're thinking about reading this book, please check the trigger warnings. <laughs> this book is basically about six friends and they're having a college reunion. I think it was 10 years after they all graduated from college. Yeah. 10 years after graduation. But the thing was that shortly before they all graduated, one of their friends at college was murdered and that was never solved. And they're trying to solve the murder of their friend 10 years later at their college reunion. This book is being told in dual timelines, so we're getting scenes from the past and not just one past time, but plenty of different times in the past. So like the year of the murder and two years before the murder, one year before the murder, a month before the murder, a week before the murder, the day of the murder, the day after the murder, many months after the murder, plenty of different times throughout the past before the college reunion and then obviously we're getting the present time at the college reunion. This book was incredibly thrilling. I kept like making up theories about it and trying to piece together, you know, who did it, how did it happen. Given how the story was told and how the narrative was giving away information, it was incredibly exciting to try and piece together what exactly happened. I do think the ending was rather satisfying. It's been a couple of weeks since I read this book, so I don't completely remember, but I think I had it figured out a couple of pages before it was actually revealed, but it was still satisfying. The only thing that I was struggling with a bit was that this book is obviously about, you know, college. In this book there were like competitions and things where people were crowned queen and king and all that sort of stuff. And I objectively understand the significance of that because of the community aspect and college peer pressure and all that sort of stuff but I was struggling to subjectively understand the meaning of all these traditions to the characters. So that was just one thing but that's a completely personal thing for me because I never really grew up with that many traditions in high school or college or anything 
But other than that, I did actually enjoy this book even though it is kind of dark. By the way, there's also basically a bit of romance involved, but it's closed door, like it's about college friend groups. Obviously there's some romantic relationships, but we're not seeing any spicy scenes or anything in that sense. And I think I'm giving this book four stars. I did enjoy it, but it just didn't feel like five stars for me. Also, I noticed that I'm sometimes having a bit of a hard time rating thrillers unless I immediately know in my heart that they're a five star. But I feel like it was a good book. But again, I don't have that many thriller books to compare it with. So yeah, four stars for me. The next book I read was My Mess is a Bit of a Life by Georgia Pritchard. This one is a non-fiction book and it's a memoir, I believe. At least that's what I found out. I feel like it's a bit hard to differentiate between memoir, biography, autobiography, you know, and I'm not that well versed in that territory of non-fiction books, but I believe that this is a memoir. <laughs> This was a very quick read. I mean, the audiobook for this is only four hours long and I did listen to the audiobook while reading this. The book has 279 pages, but the author basically tells many different short stories from her life and they're mainly about topics like anxiety, loss, I think depression as well, panic attacks. So please do check trigger warnings before you head into this book. Again, it was a really quick read. Many of these pages aren't even filled up halfway as you can see here or here, for example, it's just all short stories, basically, or short anecdotes would probably be a pretty good word for that. <laughs> and I actually really, really enjoyed this book. It wasn't in the way that I enjoy a fiction book, like a fantasy book or a romance novel but I enjoyed this book in a way that the author managed to talk about anxiety and what it actually means to have anxiety in a day-to-day -day life in such a kind of humorous way. I had this book on my physical TBR it's been a long time and I've shied away from this book for a long time because I thought it was gonna be a heavy read for me since it deals with mental health issues but it was far less of a heavy read than I had expected simply because the author managed to put so much humor and irony and sarcasm and all those things that kind of lighten it up a bit into the stories, but they did not take any of the meaning away from what was being talked about. I felt so seen and so heard in this book. I tapped quite a couple of these stories just because I felt like, yes, this is it. This is exactly it. I read sentences in this book that made me feel like this is exactly what I've been feeling or struggling with for years but never actually managed to put into words and now I finally have words for it even if they're not my own and even if I didn't come up with them myself but I finally know how to articulate what I feel and what I struggle with, you know what I mean? So this book just gave me a lot and for that I enjoyed it a whole lot 
and I'm giving it five stars. Now the last book I read in January was a brick <laughs> and I did not read it a hundred percent voluntarily. I mean in the end I did read it voluntarily but I probably would not have picked it up completely on my own. That book is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I did a whole reading vlog on this book so I'm not gonna go too much into depth on my opinion on this book. This book was the January book club pick of the book month that I participate in. It took me a while to get through this book, let me tell you, because this thing is 662 pages long and I think that is the longest book I have read to this day. Yes, A Conjuring of Light was the longest book I had read before this one, but I think it only had 624 pages. So this one now holds the record. <laughs> and this book was moving slow. It's about Quoth, and Quoth is basically somewhat of a legendary magician in this world. He's a myth to some people, actually. That's how legendary he is. <laughs> Now this scribe has come up to him and was like, I want to write down your life story. And Quoth was like, okay, I will tell you my life story, but it's gonna take three days. And this book is basically day one of him telling his life story. There is a sequel out currently, The Wise Man's Fear, which is day two of him telling his life story. And then there should be a third book in The Kingkiller Chronicle, but that one isn't out yet. <laughs> anyway, this is obviously a fantasy book. There's also some romance aspects, friendship, adventures, all those kind of things. But again, it's moving really slow. I mean, he's telling his entire life story in three days. I would not be able to summarize my entire life story in three days. And this is day one. Imagine how many things you can talk about if you're talking for like, I don't know, eight hours straight, at least, probably. <laughs> the whole book was going slowly but at some point, Quoth was accepted at the university, which is not a spoiler, it literally says that on the back of the book. <laughs> and ever since then, I had been so much more interested again in the book. My interest in the story was basically kind of going like a roller coaster a bit at the beginning, but ever since he entered the university, I was so into it and I was totally enjoying all that stuff but then he kind of left the university again and I was a bit bummed out again. Honestly, I gave the book 3.5 stars and I feel like if it hadn't been this slow, I would have probably given it 4 stars, maybe even higher actually. So it definitely was not a bad book, but it was for sure dragging a bit at some points. <laughs> it wasn't a bad book, there was some really gorgeous prose. And now onto the books I read in February. The first book I finished in February was Ranger's Apprentice number one, the Ruins of Gorlan by John Flanagan. It's the first book in the main series of Ranger's Apprentice. I already mentioned that. Now, for this book, I also put up a whole reading vlog, so I'll try not to go too much into depth on this book. I read this for a readathon that a booktuber is hosting with a friend of hers and they're basically reading one book out of the series per month, starting with the first book of the main series, obviously. I actually really enjoyed this book. I mean, it's not the most intricate plot I've ever read, but 
It's also only like 280 pages long and I definitely feel like it was a good start to the series. At the beginning I felt like there was a bit too much telling instead of showing but again it's the first book in a series so I think it's fine. On the other hand I also feel like the author pulled of this all-knowing narrator writing style pretty well. Oftentimes I don't know how to feel about it or I have to get used to it for a bit, which was also the case with this book because obviously with an all-knowing narrator we jump between the thoughts and feelings of one character to the next and the other and another one, that sort of thing. Which, yeah, I have to get used to it from time to time, but I did and the book pulled it off pretty well, in my opinion. Though I also don't usually read that many books that have this narrator style. <laughs> At least it didn't irritate me or anything, so that is a very good point. I absolutely loved the medieval vibes and seeing Will, the main character, train to become a ranger and strengthen and broaden his skill set. By the way, that's basically what this book is about. There's Will, who is an orphan, and all the kids of, or teenagers, I should probably say, of a certain age get to choose or they are being chosen for a certain craft like for doing an apprenticeship in the kitchen or at battle school and Will was chosen to become a ranger's apprentice <laughs> what a surprise <laughs> the ranger Holt is training him which, by the way, at first I didn't really know what to think of Halt. I got some good father figure vibes from him at some points and I really, really did enjoy it. I honestly can't wait to continue this series. It's more of a need at this point than a want and I'm really excited to continue going along with this readathon. So I gave this book four stars. It doesn't quite feel like a five star, even though I really enjoyed it. But also, I heard that the books in this series get better. <laughs> so yeah, I just want to keep some space with the rating, you know, for future books possibly. <laughs> and another book I read in February was Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. First of all, I want to say Look at how gorgeous this cover is. There's multiple editions of this book and all of them are gorgeous, but especially the pastel covers. They're just chef's kiss, honestly. I first read this book as an ebook because it is the or was actually the February book club pick of the book club that I am participating in. I just enjoyed it so much that I got it as a paperback. <laughs> I also bought the sequel, so that's already telling you something, right? <laughs> now this book is basically about Princess Shiori, who... <laughs> There's a lot of things about her. Um, she has a secret, namely that she has magic running through her veins, but where she lives, magic is forbidden. And the problem is she loses control of sad magic on the day that she's actually supposed to marry her betrothed which is also something she absolutely does not want to do. <laughs> the thing is, her stepmother, Raikama, banishes Shiori and curses her and her six brothers. She turns 
Shiori's six brothers into cranes and this book then is about Shiori obviously trying to break that curse and save herself and her brothers most of all and honestly this was so fantastic i really really enjoyed this book there's retellings because i think this is based on a story by hans christian andersen if i'm not mistaken but it's also influenced by asian culture obviously which was really refreshing for me because all my other fantasy books are usually more <laughs> western culture <laughs> So this was a great change to my palette of books, which I really appreciated and I realized I should do more often. There's dragons and gods and myths and all that kind of stuff. It was so good. There's romance, which is kind of enemies to lovers. Honestly, I enjoyed the romance part of this book so, so much. It was so good. I was screaming at some of these things. I've heard a few people say that they were bored at some points of this book, which I can't agree with. I don't think there was any point that I was bored with this book. I also think that the pace of this book was pretty good, in my opinion. There was one thing at the very end which I can't talk about because it would be spoilery, but I wish we would have spent more time in a very certain place at the very end of the book to really see how it felt for Shiori to be in that place. I don't know, maybe the people who have read the book know which place I mean. <laughs> I'm trying to be vague here in order not to spoil anything. The only real big, actually, <laughs> critique I have for this book is that one of the main plot points, aka the curse that Shiori was put under, is really confusing and unclear at some points. I also can't go too much in depth about this because it would obviously be spoilery, but I've also talked to this about other people and they agree, so it's not just me. There are some things that the narrative tells us or characters in the book tell us and then they also tell us like this thing is possible and this thing is impossible but then what's supposed to be impossible happens and there are no consequences even though there should be consequences at some points it was kind of hard to understand where the curse draws the line and then even after what was supposed to be impossible happened and there were no consequences the characters still tried to tell us as readers that what happened was supposed to have consequences. Like they said it with their whole chest. It would have had consequences, but it happened and it didn't have consequences. You know what I mean? So a huge bummer, honestly, because I would have loved to give this book five stars. I enjoyed it so much. I had such a great time reading this book, but considering that such a huge part of the plot is so foggy, <laughs> I just can't give it five stars. But I think I'm still gonna give it four stars, honestly. And that is it for my January and February reading wrap up. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, perhaps give this video a thumbs up, maybe subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future videos I will upload. Perhaps let me know in the comments if you have read any of the books that I reviewed in this video. Or if not, maybe just let me know what you're reading at the moment, how you're doing, just anything, honestly. Other than that, follow me on Instagram or I will see you guys somewhere else on the internet. Bye!